Hi everyone, my name is Chloe, and today, I want to tell you about how I got pregnant right in the pool. By the way, I was only 15 years old at the time, and I didn't understand much about sexual safety. And all because my mother was too strict. She was also very religious. Anyway, you're about to find out for yourselves, but in the meantime, get ready to listen. As I said, my mother is a religious person, and she does everything according to the rules. She goes to church every Sunday, she prays a lot, and she always asks God to give me good prudence. I didn't understand the meaning of the word at all at the time. My father had left us when I was very young, and that was when my mother began to talk to God. It was okay, but over the years, she became a little obsessive. My mother forbade me to do many things, like watch TV, wear pants, or let my hair down. I don't think the church forbade it, but my mother did. She had a clear idea of what she thought the right way to live was, the way she thought. She just threw out some of my clothes on the street, along with the TV. I didn't even have a phone like everyone else. My mother thought we only needed a phone for communication, and we had a home phone for that. But to be honest, no one ever called us, except to invite my mother to all sorts of church meetings, where she went there like a holiday. Once at school, some people from some organizations came to us and arranged for us to have a meeting on sexual education. It was interesting. We laughed with our classmates, of course, but they told us how the male and female body were set up, what physical intimacy between partners was, and spent most of the time talking about what safety meant. At the end of the meeting, we were all given contraceptives, handed out to everyone, so I took some too. I walked out of there with my friend Emily, and she laughed and talked about how she hadn't learned anything new. And I walked in silence and thought about how everything was new to me. Why aren't you talking? Well, I'm inexperienced in that respect, you know? It's okay, there's always a first time. I don't know, I don't even have a boyfriend, so it's not hard to find a boyfriend. But you have to get out of the house to find one. My mom doesn't like going out. I remember, you weren't even at my birthday party. By the way, I'm having a party tomorrow night, so I'm still inviting you. I hope you'll still come. I'd really like that. Look, Chloe, you're my friend, and I love you, so just try to ask your mom for once, or think of something. You're smart, Emily told me, and then we said goodbye and I went home. In the evening, I cooked dinner and listened to my mom tell me about her time with her church friends. I was bored, but if I didn't listen to her, she thought it was Emily's bad influence. She already forbade me to be friends with her. I just didn't tell her about it. I told her I wanted to go out for her birthday party, but my mom, as usual, said no. I got upset, and my mom started talking about how I should have gone to church. My anger just boiled over. I got up from the table and yelled that I was sick of her meetings and that I wanted at least once to be like a normal teenager, to just hang out. My mom turned red with rage. She yelled at me that I had lost my temper, that I had become a bad, bad sinner. I didn't want to listen to that nonsense, so I just went to my room, but my mother followed me. She walked behind me and scolded and scolded. In a crazy way, she threw my bag on the floor and the contraceptives that we were given at school fell out. It was a total bummer. Stunned, she kicked them with her foot. Then she looked at me with round eyes and was like, What is this? Is this, is this yours? I didn't even have time to respond before she slapped me in the face and told me I was a brat, not a baby. Then she walked out of my room, slamming the door loudly. In the morning, my mother didn't make breakfast and walked with me to school. I asked her why, and she said she would always follow me around from now on. Mom, are you serious? I'm not seven years old, enough already! Shut your mouth, I see you've become too mature. They weren't mine, we were handed them out at school. Who handed them out? I told her about the lecture, and my mom went straight to the school principal, made a scandal there, and shamed me. Then my mom said she was going to go home and come pick me up after school. The whole school looked at me and laughed. It was the worst day of my life. Only Emily, knowing my mother, calmed me down and told me not to freak out, and then a friend reminded me about the party. Really? I can't go anywhere for like 100 years after this, and I'm a laughingstock now. So, no, I'm not coming. I'm sorry. Why don't you stand up for yourself for once? Otherwise, you'll be dependent on her for the rest of your life. Who knows what she'll be like in another year? Maybe she won't let you see anyone at all. She already does that. Oh shit, Chloe, aren't you sick of it? Try running away. What do you mean? Pretend to be asleep? Don't you watch movies? 
Oh, you don't have a TV. Well, at least for a couple of hours, I'll see you at my party tonight. Oh, by the way, happy birthday. Thanks. I'll be waiting for you. My friend hugged me, and after class, my mom was already waiting for me at the entrance. At first, she scolded me for still hanging out with Emily, and at home, she loaded me up with work to my eyeballs. I tried to do everything quickly so I could supposedly go to bed early. When my mom fell asleep, I climbed out the window and ran to Emily's party. There were so many people there. It was noisy but fun. Emily got excited at the sight of me and immediately introduced me to this one guy. His name is Ben. He started actively courting me and I had a little bit to drink and got dizzy. We started messing around. I lost track of time and just had fun. Ben was very funny. He pushed me into the pool and fell in there himself. We started splashing and laughing, then suddenly he kissed me. It was my first kiss ever. At first I was scared and then I loved it. We kissed for longer and longer and I forgot about everything. I woke up in the morning in one of the rooms at Emily's house. Ben was lying next to me, sound asleep, and that's when I freaked out. Oh no, oh shit, no, 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 mom's going to kill me. Why am I naked? Are we? These thoughts made me feel sick. My head was dizzy, hurting badly. I quickly pulled myself together and ran home. I climbed over the windowsill, hoping my mother was still asleep, but she wasn't. She was angry and red, waiting for me at the door. Yes, can you imagine what went on there? She beat me very badly, crying and screaming, and then locked the window and my room. She almost put a chain on me like a dog. It was horrible. My mother wouldn't let me out for two weeks. She went to Emily's mother and forbade Emily from ever coming near me. I was left all alone. I had no one else to talk to at school. During break time, I went out to eat, but I immediately threw up at the sight of my lunch. And just when I thought it was gone, my nausea increased more and more. I didn't understand what was going on. A couple of days later, I felt sick in the middle of class and ran out to the bathroom. Emily came running after me. She asked me if I was okay. I wiped my mouth and washed my face and told her I thought I was sick. Emily got into a pose, with her arms crossed over her chest. How long have you been nauseous? A week, I think. Have you slept with someone? I felt embarrassed. I didn't know what to say and just kept quiet and looked at the ceiling. Take a pregnancy test. What? Do it. I think you're pregnant. No, 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 no. I covered my face with my hands and sat down on the floor and cried. Emily bought me a test. I went home, read the instructions, and did everything right. After a couple of minutes of waiting, there were two lines. Suddenly, my world came crashing down. I felt sick. I wanted to howl with fear. What do I do now? I thought. And then my mom came into the bathroom and she saw the test. I yelled at her, like, why did she burst into the bathroom? And my mom just said she knew that I was not just sick. She started yelling again, slapped me in the face the first time, the second time, but the third time I didn't let her. I grabbed her arm and stopped her. Stop it! Mom, I may not be the perfect daughter, but I'm your child. And instead of supporting me, you just hit me. I'm sick of it. You don't know anything about life. Do you know how hard it was for me to raise you? I didn't ask you to give birth to me. But don't worry, I won't make the same mistake you did. What are you going to do? I didn't say anything back. I went to Emily's and asked to borrow money. My friend decided to give me a ride to the clinic. We got there and I told her what I was going to do. We sat there waiting for about an hour, during which time I didn't talk. I just kept quiet and cried. Emily was with me. The time dragged on slowly, and my head was a mess because I hadn't had time to think about anything properly, hadn't called Ben, and I didn't know what I really wanted. I was just scared. I felt rejected, and I felt like an abandoned mother. My name came over the microphone. I flinched. Emily held my hand tightly the whole time, she got up with me and went into the doctor's room. After examining me, he told me that my vitals were good, and then they asked, Are you sure? I cried, at which point my mom burst into the office. She was crying too, knelt down in front of me, and asked me not to go through with it. I'm sorry, my girl. I wasn't thinking about you at all. Please don't do this. You will regret it all your life. Please. I looked at her and couldn't get a word out of my mouth. 
And then I told her that I was responsible for my actions and was only asking for support, whatever choice I made. Anyway, I did what I thought was right. After leaving the clinic, we drove home. The next day, Ben came over and Emily told him everything. He promised me that he would be there for me and the baby. It's already a few months later and we've decided to get married. Hi everyone, my name is Emma. I want to tell you a story that happened during my school years. Or rather, about my early pregnancy. I grew up on a small island where all the neighbors knew each other. Unfortunately, there was no public school where I lived. Many children have been helping their parents at work since they were young. I'm one of them. But there were some kids who went to school a few miles away in another city. But my family couldn't afford that. Although they really wanted me to get an education. My mom and dad worked from morning to night to save for my school. I understood this and tried to help them in every way. Although they did not get me to go with them to work, I did all the work on the farm and around the house. I admit it was a difficult time for us, sometimes even when we were left without lunch. I am grateful to them for the fact that despite this, they were able to save a little money and we moved to America. At that time, I was nine years old. It was hard to get used to the new atmosphere. On such a small island, I'm not used to busy streets and surrounded by a large number of people and a new language that I barely understood. Life in the city seemed very fast to me. My parents managed to enroll me in a local school. The worst thing was that I was older than my classmates. But despite this, I very much wanted to get a good education. I tried to pay more attention to my teachers, and I always did my homework with great responsibility. I practiced English more. In addition to homework, Samantha tried to write and read more. My father worked two jobs at the time, and this allowed my mother to take care of me. It was also a big change since I didn't get much attention from my parents as a child. My mother's attention helped me, and I really needed it. She helped me with my studies and encouraged me to become a responsible student. The teachers were happy with me, although they knew that before, I had no education. And it seemed to me that everything was getting better. By the time I reached the ninth grade, we were already doing well. My father managed to get a much better job. In the evenings, he spent time with us and even moved to a nice apartment in the best area. And there was enough money to buy good clothes and furniture. We weren't rich, but it was more than enough for us. I had a lot of friends at school, and the situation in life suited me very well. I met a guy named Brad once. This is a really good guy, high-powered and smart. I immediately fell in love with him. I told my parents about it. I think they liked it too. They let me see him. We often spent time together. We walked, went to the movies, and we had so much fun together. Most of all, we loved kissing. It seemed so innocent to us. We were so young and stupid. One night, he came to my house. My parents went to work the night shift. In the morning, we ate popcorn and watched a romantic movie. And then it all turned into the fact that in the morning, we woke up naked together in my bed. At that moment, it seemed to me that nothing terrible had happened. We also continued to walk and have fun. A few weeks passed and I thought I was sick. I was dizzy and sick all the time. My mother was very worried. I couldn't get out of bed for a couple of days. When I got a little better, I told my parents that it was all over. Mom said it was just the flu, but in fact, I was still sick. I didn't want to disturb my parents and pretended that everything was fine. She also continued to go to school and studied as usual. But it was strange. My stomach started to grow. I thought I was just getting fat, but I didn't eat any more than usual, and I suspected it was all wrong. Then we talked to Brad and decided that maybe it was a 
pregnancy. But as a pregnancy, I was so young. I was in shock. That night at dinner, I couldn't hold back my words and tears. In the blame of crying, I told my parents. They couldn't believe it, and they were so angry. They scolded me for hours. I was so ashamed. I felt like I had betrayed them. The next morning, my mother and I went to the doctor to confirm whether I really was pregnant. After all the tests, the doctor said that I was already four months pregnant. So there was no other choice but to give birth. In the evening, the parents quarreled with each other. My father said I was ruining my life, and my mother said they should support me. I was so sick at the time. But I was their daughter, and they couldn't turn their backs on me. That night, my mother called and told Brad's parents, and they came to us with Brad. I saw the terrible anger in my parents' eyes. That evening after talking, the adults decided that in any case, they would support us and help with the child's upbringing, and we must continue to learn. I read a lot of books about my pregnancy, and our parents gave us a lot of advice and helped us at every step. Brad and Emma continued to date, and when they finished high school, they moved to another city together. I had a beautiful daughter. They called her Ava. We have a great family, and the grandparents were very happy for our daughter. She was pampered and cared for in every way. Brad and I got married, and we are already planning to give birth to more children, and we will do our best to give everyone a decent education. Don't forget to subscribe and watch other interesting stories on the channel.